Okay, so <clears throat> let's begin as soon as you come into one compiler. The first thing you note that it's been divided into two sections. This is where you write the code. This is where the output comes into play. Code means you write an instructions. And when you execute that code, the output of that code will be displayed on the disk side. It becomes very easy, wonderful way to manage and work with that. Cool. Excellent. And then keep an eye on this red button because we will be using this to execute our code, to compile and execute our code. And this website will do all that for us. Let's dive into the code. The first thing is printing an output. Okay. To print an output in, C, uh, in Python, we basically use this print statement. Okay. This is called a print function, which is responsible for printing whatever you write inside the parenthesis on the console. So yeah, it basically allows us to print the output on the console in a simple and easy manner. So whenever we need that, we use that. It does not contain any semicolon if you're coming from any other language, it's just simple print statement. The beauty of Python is that you don't need to write any prefix and postfix, any class or any other structure. You just start coding. Okay, so you write print, hello world, without semicolon. As soon as you click on execute, it executes the code. Okay, you want more statements, you can write print. And you can say inverted quotations and I say uh, my name is Dr. for example Zishan and not example actually is my name and if you run the code you see it prints the output on the console okay that's how the first we print the output on a console okay <clears throat> next let's talk about variables and data types okay so uh, if I have simply if I let's just put down a comment variables and data types now, what do we mean by variables and data types? Variable means that when we're working with pro programming, we need to store data and we need to work on data. That's the first key major thing. So we start with something called x is equals to 10. Now, what we have done here is we have said that I need this data. Let me just zoom into this guy a little bit more so you can see this better. Okay. So we say, hey, listen, I have this data called 10 and I want to store this 10 in a variable called x. Now, x behaves uh, or is known as a variable. But it also is known as a container. It can be considered as a container which stores this variable value 10. So when we do that, basically what is done is a memory is allocated in our computer for this variable x. And then inside that memory, the value of 10 is saved. And it is now being referred through this x variable. So whenever we are using the system, now you understand that, hey, I have a value 10 that I have now stored inside my computer's memory. And I can access it by using this x variable. Okay. So it, this x becomes a pointer, it becomes a reference variable or that's what actually the word is, but it becomes a reference point by which we access and use this data value and we call it from the memory. Okay. Similarly, you can store any other type of variable as well. So for example, I can say name is equals to and I can use uh, Dr. Zishan. Now what we have done is we have used something called an extreme value. Here what we have 10 is the number. Okay, as we know, it's a, it's a whole number. So when we save this whole number, it becomes an integer data type. When you save a string, it becomes a string data type. A string is known as a data type that contains multiple characters. This is a natural number. This is a number of characters. So when you use anything inside inverted quotations, it automatically becomes a string. Okay, so <coughs> this is the basics of variable. You can create as many variable, variables as you like. So this we basically say, hey, this is integer, okay, and now this becomes what I call um, string variable. What I'm now doing is I'm using hash. Hash in Python is known for comments, okay. So for example, if I use hash, this is a comment, okay. Uh, comments, C O M E N comments are ignored by compiler. Okay, I will talk about this a little bit later as well. But this comment means that whatever you write with hash are completely ignored by your compiler. So that's why they are safe and anything we want, don't want to compiler to read it and throw it as in the output, we just comment it out. And they are used for documenting and writing down the instructions. So now this becomes a string. And then similarly, I can say, um, uh, for example, uh, SCURE score is equals to 23.4254. Now what we have done, we have created a float value as we call it, okay. In other words, if you are using a whole numbers, they are known as integers. If you are using a decimal numbers, they are known as floating points or floating values, okay. If you are just using an, something inside inverted quotations, it becomes a string. String does not exist without inverted quotations. If you create something like that, now the Python compiler will complain. It doesn't understand what this is. 
So the inverted quotations play a key part in letting it know that, hey, you are creating a string variable. Okay. So strings are simply considered as a collection of similar data types. Strings in Python are arrays of bytes representing Unicode characters. You can use a single or double quotations to define the string, meaning that I can have a for example ch channel is equals to i use a single quotations and i can say learn with uh, w3sch schools okay so now this becomes my another string this string is defined as array of characters okay what does array mean means collection of multiple characters anything where multiple characters are involved is known as a string this can be used uh, with what we call um, single quotations or double quotations okay a string as well so this is again a string data type they both are allowed in python what again they are they are known as variable and data types meaning that now i have a data and i have stored that data in this variable called score which behaves like a container also this means that this variable value has now been saved inside memory and the way i need to read it i will be using it through this variable okay so if you have that fantastic now how do we uh, use these variables you can easily go and say listen I can have a print statement and I can say print my name. Okay, and if I execute the code, now you see we have an identification error, unexpected indent. Wonderful. So now what we have, we have one of the worst things about Python that I like, or uh, sorry, I don't like. Okay, the worst thing about Python is the indentation. Python is somehow very strict about these indentations. So somehow when I was writing the code, I managed to add a space to it. Python doesn't like this space because it actually considers space as a part of a block of code. I will talk about this in a moment. So if you remove the spaces, click on the run. Now you see we have a hello world. We have a my name, the second print statement. And now I have printed the third statement name. So now it again prints the name. So what we have done is we have called the variable here and we have called the variable here. In this variable at this point, I saved this string inside this variable name. Now, as I said, this becomes container. Whenever we want to work on this container, we just simply use that container name and it will use and access that value. I can combine this with multiple other values as well. For example, I can say, listen, I want to add, multiply, subtract with it, uh, whatever operations I want to do, I can do that on this variable. So I can say, listen, print um, x plus SURE score. Okay. So what now we are going to do is if I run the code, it says 33.54. So what is X? X is a value of 10 and score has a value of 23.54. So now these two are variables and we say, hey, X plus score. So what it's doing is it's adding these two variable values together and returning us the answer. Similarly, we can use something else as well. We can say, hang on, I can have a print bracket star bracket close and I can say, listen, I have my name but make that name to upper bracket star bracket close what i've now done is i've called a function called upper okay which if i run the code would convert my string into uppercase so now what we have done we said hey listen i have a string okay and i use a dot as a connection operator and i call a function of a string class so inside our python there are some built-in functions just like print print is one built-in function Similarly, there are many other built-in functions and systems that are available and which we will be using as we go along. So I'm saying, hey, listen, I have a name, which is a string, and I want to perform some action on this string. So a string is behaved as a class that has by default several different methods. So I'm saying, hey, take this string variable and <coughs> perform this operation on it, which is basically turning into uppercase. So what this will do, it will turn it into an uppercase. Similarly, there are many other methods as well that we can use. So we can say, for example, print. Let's just come here and I can say ch chani. Oh, again, I misspelled it. Dot. Um, let's just, for example, do lower now. Okay. So I want all of this string to be in lowercase. So I call, say, use this variable called chani dot lower. If I hit run, it converts my string into lowercase. Now, do keep in mind the spelling mistakes. For example, I rename it to channel and I run the code. Now it gives me error. Why there is an error and where is the error? These two things are important to understand. First, if you read it, the name error says the name Chani is not defined. This error name. This means that, hey, I'm trying to use this variable Chani 
and it does not exist i don't know it's not defined as python calls it meaning that the spelling of this is channel and i've tried to call a variable that's of different spelling this creates a problem so this is something that we need to be very careful of if you're using your variable names make sure your variable names don't have spaces and they are not using any keywords we're going to talk about this later on and you spell them correctly as they are okay second you note that it when i did the error it printed the statements up till here upper and then it threw the error that means that it interprets the code line by line okay when we execute the code the code is interpreted line by line so first line was okay second line was okay third pr this print was okay this print was okay this print was okay so the five first five lines printed fine when it reached at this sixth line it found that hey, spelling is issue so it generated the error and gave us the line number here line number 14 so at line number 14 we have the error so do keep this thing in mind because if you are writing code that goes for hundreds of lines maybe thousands sometimes then finding out exactly where the error is and what is the error is the key thing in under debugging your code so we find the line number and we find the reason and then we would be jumping to that point easily solving the issue wonderful excellent now similar to this we have something called booleans as well okay booleans what are booleans booleans are basically data types okay which for example active if i declare a variable is equals to and i can say uh, let's have true that's it boolean is a data type that holds only true or false okay which in words we say one or zero meaning that this is a data type that can only store whether true or false that's it at any given time it will have either true or false that's it okay so they are known as booleans booleans represents one of these two values they often are used in conditional statements and uh, looping statements for a logic as well they play a very important part even though they seem hey why i do any true and false i can use that but this means that the statement is either true or false remember in programming everything has to be saved in memory so when I created a name variable, this value got saved in memory. When I created this, it saved in memory. When I scored, it saved in memory. Then I printed this variable's value, so it fetched the data from memory and printed on the screen. But here, remember what we did? We did x plus score. So it did fetch the value of x, then fetch the value of score and performed a mathematical calculation on it. Now, what happens to the answer? This thing this answer is also again saved in the memory and then directly referred to here through a temporary variable it's there even though the value is here we have not stored it in a variable but memory is allocated for this variable meaning that no matter what you do inside your programming everything goes through memory every system works with a memory so you need to understand that when you want to store some data it has to go inside the memory and then it can be sent to the processor for processing that's how the internal coding works right um, so similarly when we do perform various different conditional statements they also need memory so for that basic statement uh, they need conditional values which either are true and false which again are stored in memory so that's why we boolean play a quite important part when we talk about uh, the data types uh, in terms of conditional statements understand wonderful now uh, let's talk a little bit more about something called python casting Again, we have already talked about comments. So anything you don't want to read by coding, you just put it in comments. Now let's go and talk more about something called uh, Python casting. What do we mean by casting? Casting allows you to convert a variable from one type to another. This is usually when you need to perform operations that require a specific data types. For example, x is equals to integer 3.4. Okay, now what we have done here is we have done a casting, which basically means that uh, 3.4 is float, which will be assigned converted or which will be yeah converted to whole number. Okay, so means x is just a variable right now. But what we have done now is we said hey, I have a 3.4 which is a floating value. I want to convert this floating value into a whole number or a natural number. So to do that, we need to use int function, which is a built-in function that will convert in x into an integer number, meaning whole number. As discussed, 
inside this memory, everything needs to be allocated and defined. What type of data I'm saving and through what variable and value I'm saving. So once you do understand this, casting becomes quite important. Because for example, at this point, when we did X plus score, this value is in decimal. This value has been saved in a memory as a floating point value. Float is a different from integer. Integer can only have number in form and as a whole numbers or a natural numbers, no decimal values. So if I need that, I need to do something called casting that converts our float into integer value. So if you go here and print and you say, let me print the value of X boss. And then I go here and hit run again. You see, it gives a system error because it says there's a full stop here. Okay. So if you don't see the full stop, a Python line number 24. So line number 24, we got it. Uh, we say there's arrow here. Okay. This arrow indicates there's some problem with this line. Now, do keep an eye on this. The arrow is actually on this hash sign, <clears throat> which is a comment. Technically, it should be ignored. Why are we getting an arrow here? So the error is invalid syntax. Means there's something wrong here. So if I come back in my code, you'll notice that there's actually full stop I put by default. So do make sure you remove that. Now if you hit run, voila. Okay, so now see what happened. The answer became 3 instead of 3.4 because a whole number is just a whole number. And if you cast a decimal into an integer, it will delete the decimal value and just put the first whole number as it is. Similarly, you can do various other types of costing as well. So if I have y uh, is equals to, if I say, for example, uh, float bracket 3. Now what we mean, now we basically are doing the reverse process. Okay, convert integer to float. float. So I have given it a number 3, but I want this free to be of type float. So if I run the code, okay, so if I run the code again, now I get 3. Oh, sorry, I have not done anything printing here. Let's print the value here. Print and less time this time print the value of y. Hopefully everything is okay. Run the code. Now see 3.0. So we have an in number called 3. And we just want to print it value. So it's going to say 3.0. Why? Where does the 0 come from? Again, 0, 0.0 has no impact, right? And because we only have a whole number it, and we convert it into a float, float has to be a decimal. So it added 0, 0.0 automatically to the code. Okay, wonderful. So let's create a program that calculates the area of a rectangle. Let's do some more example. Work. So if I bring the code up and let's do, for example, task one and calculate area of um, a rectangle. Okay, how do we do that? So for example, if I have this program, I want to do that. So first I need data. So I will say, hey, I have something called width. And I need something called height, right? So for width, let me say is equals to maybe five. And then the, uh, the if you have five should do the trick. Oops. Height is equals to, for example, 10. So now we have height and width. And we know that we need to calculate area, which in terms of its simple form should be width multiplied by height. H E I G H T height. So now what is width? This is the width variable we created. So we took its value. We created a height variable. We took its value and we multiplied together. Whatever is the answer is then being assigned to another variable, another container called area. So we have done the mathematical calculation and assigned that to a variable. So in a memory, now area will contain the value of width multiplied by height. Okay. Easy peasy. So let's just, once we are here, come back here and let's print. And we can say, listen, print and single quotation marks. If you want double quotation marks, if you want up to you, we can say the area of the rectangle is, and we use what we call dot area. 